Welcome back to another episode of the Arc Switch Survival Guide. Today we are going to talk about the magnifying glass, which makes things look super weird, right? No, actually, it is one of the most helpful but overlooked items in Arc. Not a lot of people know about it, but it can actually let you see the health and torpidity of a wild dinosaur. Now, it's not always helpful, but some dinos, if you're trying to tame them and they get really low, on health, this will allow you to know when they're about to die and when you need to stop shooting them. And it can be a lifesaver. This can be the difference between taming and killing a wild dinosaur. But it does have very limited range, and sometimes it can be completely useless and actually a real problem to try to use a magnifying glass while you're taming or fighting a wild dino. So we will go over all of that and teach you when you should and should not use one. The magnifying glass also lets you see what you'll get when you harvest certain things like a bush, trees, rocks, things like that. And that can be kind of helpful depending on how much you know about the world around you. And if you watch this video until the very end, I am going to hatch an entire litter of Tapehara eggs. And once again, we've got some twins and they are just popping out and flying across the room like popcorn. I think I've got a problem. I have way too many Tapeharas. I'm like a crazy cat lady for Tapeharas, but hey, it'll be really helpful because we're going to have more than enough kibble, but uh, I, I need to stop. You guys just stop me if I breed any more Tapeharas, okay? Now before we start with the magnifying glass, I just have to show off this really awesome tech raptor. This is our baby tech raptor that we just bred, and he is now all grown up. And check out how cool he turned out. He's got his black coloring like his father, but he's got red highlights like his mother, and he just looks awesome. So I'm really happy how he turned out. That is our first baby from our tech raptors, and we'll keep breeding a lot of of those guys. We'll have a whole raptor army by the time we're done. So the magnifying glass is learned at level 25 and it takes crystal, metal, hide, fiber, and most importantly obsidian and also wood. But obsidian is going to be the hardest thing to get your hands on when you're making the magnifying glass. Now I've got an entire episode where I showed you where to get obsidian on the island map and I'll put a link in the description for how to find that. And uh, I've also got an entire episode on where to find any resources and how to use a map that shows the spawn locations of everything you could possibly need on the island. So be sure to check the link in the description for both of those. It'll be really helpful if you don't know where to get obsidian. But right now I've got a little bit of a weight problem. I've been eating too much, you know, now that I have an organic garden. So it's a little hard to move when I've got so much in my inventory. So let's grab that crystal, metal, obsidian. We've got quite a lot of it. I made sure to get all the obsidian I would need for a long time. And that's why I have not made a magnifying glass before this, is because it can be hard to get that obsidian that you need for it. So now we've got our magnifying glass, and I'm going to run upstairs really quick. Oop. There is some more Akatina paste, and I repaired the stairs from where I got my head stuck in the stairs while we were breeding our baby beavers. We got twins, and I was a little too excited and got my head stuck in the ceiling. So all is normal again, and we made a whole bunch of gasoline because we got a lot of oil off the bottom of the ocean. So now I've got that in the generator, and we'll probably never run out of fuel. Now you put the magnifying glass in your hot bar, and the right trigger just bashes things with it not super helpful. But the left trigger is actually pretty cool. It will show you a lot of information about a dinosaur, but you have to get really close, like one foundation away. But it did show me that this guy was on aggressive. So there you go. You've got the top bar, which is gray, 1886, and the bottom bar is his health bar. The top bar is his torpidity, which is zero, which is great. Now, if you're taming a dinosaur and it's a wild dino, it will still display that information. So you can tell how much torpidity you've done, how close it is to being knocked unconscious, and how much health it has left. The downside 
is you have to get so close you might die. Now here's an Akatina and I'm going to look at it with my telescope. That will only tell you its name and level. But if I use the magnifying glass, it shows its torpidity and health, which is much more helpful for taming. So between the telescope and the magnifying glass, you can get all the relevant information that you need when you're taming a wild dino. But unfortunately, you have to get so close, your face is going to get bitten off if you're fighting something really nasty. So there are times you should and should not use that, and I'll show you that in a minute. But first, let's go ahead and bring our uh, new baby robot dino out into the wild, and we're just going to park him next to our other raptors. So he's sitting here next to his mom and dad, and once again, he got the cool red pattern from his mother and the black coloring from his father and the red glow from his father. So he just kind of got the best of both worlds. So. That's going to be lots of fun breeding more raptors. Now one cool thing about the magnifying glass is if you point it at an item like a bush or a tree, it will actually show you what you can harvest from those things. And this lists all the possible things you can get from them. That bush may not give you a narco berry, but it's possible to get a narco berry from a bush. And if you use a pick, you may not get any wood from that tree, but if you use a hatchet, you probably will. For another example, if you use a magnifying glass on the cattails from the swamp, it will show that you can get rare flowers and plant species X from them, but you've got like a one in a hundred chance unless you're using something that gets a lot of things like a therizinosaur or stegosaur or something like that. So keep that in mind. Now you can also check out things like metal veins, rocks, anything like that, and it'll show all the possibilities. Now you only want to use a magnifying glass sometimes, and it only works for about one foundation distance. So as you can see, I'm looking at this stone pile instead of the dialogue officer. It gets a little bit glitchy and it's sometimes really hard to aim it properly. And you can see here, I can see the health and torpidity of the frog that I'm riding and the rock next to the Dilophosaur, but I'm still getting nothing from the Dilophosaur itself. So it can be a little frustrating, especially if you're trying to check out a wild dinosaur like this guy. And uh, Right now, if this was a T-Rex, I'd probably be dead. So this guy's unconscious, and I'm just going to kind of leave him alone, even though he's a decent level for a Dilophosaur. I'm just not really in the market for one right now, so we'll just be friends. So I'm going to show you most of this in the next episode when I tame an Iguanodon, but as you can see here, I'm getting a little glimpse of its health and torpidity, which lets me know that I can do some more damage to this guy. Now this is just a level 4, it's really weak and has low health, but using the magnifying glass, I'm able to make sure that I'm real careful not to kill this Iguanodon with my frog, and that allows me to get it to max out its torpidity without completely killing killing it. Now, once a dinosaur is running from you, it generally stops attacking you, at least for a while. So if you can get a dino trapped and it's running away and stops attacking you, that's a great time to pull out that magnifying glass and make sure it's okay. So there are some times when that magnifying glass is a real lifesaver, especially if you're taming something like a snail or a tapehara that doesn't naturally attack you but has low enough HP that you really have to be careful not to kill it. So that's really the main things you need to know about a magnifying glass, and we'll be right back, and then we're going to hatch some baby Tapeharas, and you can keep watching to find out what hatches. So we are back and we're up on top of the roof of my base and what I've been doing is just taking my highest level male Tapehara and getting him to mate with each of the females on the roof one by one and they're just dropping fertilized eggs down in front of my base. And as you can see here, at this point, my raptor was still an adolescent, and the beavers had not even been born yet. So we're jumping around a little bit in time, I know. But after all of this, we ended up with like five fertilized eggs, which is pretty great. And we're just going to sit and let those incubate. They're next to the air conditioning units, which means they are going to be kept 
as hot and cold as they need to be. And with two AC units, they are always the perfect temperature. And I'll drop a link in the description for some breeding guides that I've done and how to make a nursery to perfectly incubate your eggs without having to worry about them. And there they go. They're hatching and popping like popcorn and flying across the base. I love when that happens. It's just if you pile up too many eggs in one place, they just kind of fly around until they have enough space. So I'm just hitting X to claim them and just not really naming them now. And we'll actually do some cool stuff for naming our dinosaurs later. Now, at first I was excited because I thought these guys were mutated and had really cool pink coloring but turns out it was just a trick of the light because I have this cool blue colored light here so that's pretty much it we are going to make sure that we feed these guys ASAP and make sure that they do not starve because all babies start out immediately almost starving and you've got to feed them real quickly so they'll make it and well looks like we had one more so uh, we actually got six tapeharas out of five eggs which means we got twins that's pretty awesome so I hope this episode was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was short, but we have some short episodes here and there too. So be sure to like this video if you liked it and uh, drop a comment. Let me know if you are currently breeding any dinosaurs and what dinos you're breeding. And let me know if you use magnifying glasses or if you'd even ever heard of magnifying glasses. And uh, be sure to drop a comment if you have any questions about ARC that I can answer for you. I love love fielding your questions and oftentimes you guys give great advice for me and other players too so drop a comment and be sure if you have not already that you subscribe to this channel and ring that bell for notifications and you'll be notified when the next helpful video comes out there are always so many on the way and also I have a new YouTube channel that my wife and I play video games together so be sure to check the link in the description for that and subscribe over there too we have a lot of fun and our videos are quite entertaining and we will release the next video where we're going to tame this iguanodon and show you how cool iguanodons are in ARC. So until then I hope your ARC adventures are fun and safe and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching this video from the ARC Survival Guide. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more great guides like this one. ARC is an amazing game, but there is so much to learn before you can really enjoy it. We are dedicated to bringing you high quality guides, tutorials, and let's play videos that are fun, helpful, clean, and suitable for the entire family. There's a tutorial in this series for everything we have done so far in this video. Check out these playlists for more episodes from this series and other guides to help you enjoy your journey on ARC.